my dear people of God, I have great joy in my heart tonight to announce that we have the privilege to have Reverend Father Albert Nze as the guest for the night. Father, may God bless you as you take over from me. Amen. Father, we bless your name for this opportunity to be in your presence. As many, O Lord, as are connected to this line this evening, Lord, I bring to the throne, the throne of grace, the throne of mercy, the throne of divine supply, the throne of Jesus Christ, the Emmanuel, the throne from where flows power, power for divine blessings, power for divine mercy, power for divine breakthrough, power for divine provision, power for divine connection, power for divine intervention in every circumstance of life. And so, Lord, as I bring them to this throne, I pray that you will open the floodgates of heaven and let every blessing they desire, O oh Lord, begin to flow to them. Let there be, O oh Lord, a connection to your divine power, that by that power, O oh Lord, that resurrected Jesus from the tomb, that power that lifted him up to heaven, your people, O oh Lord, will be resurrected from every condition that is not pleasing to you. Lord God, that they will be lifted to the place where you have ordained them to be. For Scripture says that we are raised to reign with him from the heavenly places. Every child of God, Lord, hearing my voice today, that is operating below that throne place, that right hand of the Father, we are, we are exalted with Jesus to reign. Lord God, may there be a turnaround that will reposition them to the divine position granted. May your word, O oh Lord, be a light for our path tonight. May it be, O oh Lord, a power for breakthrough tonight. May the entrance of your word bring light in darkness, bring healing in sickness, bring healing to the brokenhearted, bring restoration of hope and joy. And may this hope, O oh Lord, never disappoint. May this joy overtake our lives. For the kingdom of God is not about eating and drinking, but about righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Father, tonight I pray that these values of your kingdom, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit will be granted as we pray and fellowship tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. My friends in Christ, uh, this evening, I want us to take our passage for our prayers from the book of Genesis. If you have your Bible, turn with me to Genesis chapter 37. I will read the first four verses. Genesis 37 from verse 1 to 4. And the Bible says, Jacob settled in the land while his father had sojourned the land of Canaan. This is the story of the family of Jacob. When Joseph was 17 years old, he tended the flocks with his brothers. He was an assistant to the sons of his father's wives, Bila and Zilpha. And Joseph brought their father bad reports about them. Israel loved Joseph best of all his sons, for he was the third child, for he was the child of his old age, and he had made him a long ornamented tonic. When his brothers saw that their father loved him best of all his brothers, they hated him so much that they could not say a kind word to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My friends, the story of the family of Jacob started with the dominance of Joseph. This is the story of the family of Jacob, verse 2 says. And when Joseph was 17 years old, he tended the flock 
with his brothers. You want to talk about the family of Jacob. Call him Israel. God changed his name to Israel. And Joseph was the first man to be mentioned. And through the story of the family, he will become the central person and a strategic personality through whom the hand of God will transform that family and keep them safe, even in a time of famine. The story of Joseph reminds me of this, the short message that the Bible presented about a name called Jabez in First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9 and 10. The Bible says Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. Joseph, I would say, was more honorable than his brothers. He was born in, into a large family. But his name and his story became a dominant name and a dominant story in the entire family. What was the reason? The story says Ishmael loved Joseph best of all his sons. He loved Joseph best. So there was a love factor that positioned Joseph for this dominance. But the every love factor has a consequence. As his father loved him, the Bible says the consequence of that love was that all his brothers hated him so much. They did not just hate him, but they hated him so much that they didn't have any kind word for him. They couldn't take it from him. Why? Because his father loved him. It wasn't the fault of Joseph that his father loved him. It wasn't the fault of his brother that his father loved him. But then the brothers hated him because his father loved him. And what was the resultant effect? The resultant effect was, according to verse 19 of this chapter of the Bible, they started conspiring against him and they called him names. Here comes the dreamer. Here comes the dreamer. He was no longer Joseph. He became the dreamer who was dreaming big and large wanting to dominate the family. The next thing they said in verse 20, let us kill him. Let us kill him so that his dreams can die, so that all these, his mighty aspirations can be buried in the grave. Some one of them, Reuben, said, there's no point killing him ourselves and having blood on our hands. Let's just throw him into the ditch. Let's throw him into the pit. Let's just do away with him, drop him in the pit and forget him here, and that will be the end of his story. That's in verse 22. In verse 23, they, they said, let us strip him of this, his garment. Let us strip him naked. Let's remove this royal garment that daddy put on him. Let's remove this garment of many colors. Let's remove this, his pride, and then cast it away. The next thing they said, they did. They threw him into the system after removing his garment and then allowed him to get to die inside the system. And that person came with an, an idea when he saw an Ishmaelite. In verse 27, Judah said, why allow him to die here and not make any gain from him? Let's sell him out to the Ishmaelite. Let's sell, sell him away. And they sold him to a stranger, a complete foreigner. So they had completed the end of his story. And they, not only, they were not only doing away with him or killing him or removing him from their midst, but they were ending his story so that he will not come back again. And they are making money out of it at the same time. And to end that story and perfect their plot, Verse 31 through 33 said, they, they soaked his cloth, his, his special garment, his, his coat of many colors. They soaked him in the blood of an animal and took it back to their father and said, that this is your son. We don't know why he was wandering about in the forest and the animals have killed him. Here is his, his cloth. These are the pieces of his cloth. We picked them up and then we decided to come and bring them back to you. All of these were stories. You know one thing about all these stories? All these stories were about ending the dream, the career, the blessing, and the personality of a dominant person in the family. What was his fault? His fault was that his father loved him. 
his father loved him. And the consequence of his father's love was that his brothers hated him. And here comes my message tonight. I do not know about you, but as a Christian believer, I am convinced that God loves you personally. Scripture says in John chapter 3 verse 16 that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So we are personally loved by God. In Jeremiah 31, verse number 3, Scripture says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have loved you with an everlasting love. So God loves you with an everlasting love. That is the love of the Father. That was what put Joseph into trouble. His father's love for him so distinguished him that his brother started plotting against him. And my dear friends, that is the way it is with us believers most of the time. Often we don't look into it, but this month I've been praying for breakthrough in the church where I serve and worship, and the Lord has been leading me into a lot of keys, a lot of keys to divine breakthrough. And he just brought me to, 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 to the book of Genesis this day as I was praying over this night's ministry and showed me seven keys to divine breakthrough. So tonight I want to, to, to show you seven keys to divine breakthrough in the life of Joseph. A breakthrough that moved him from Pete to palace. A breakthrough that made him, that broke every record in the land of Egypt, in a foreign land that made a foreigner the second in command. A foreigner who didn't have the permission to live in the place, who was even a prisoner. He was moved from prison to palace, but even because of him, every, every, every protocol was broken that he would be exalted and become the next to the king. He became the next. He had a key to every place in the land of Egypt, a foreign land, where he was not a citizen, where he didn't have even a residency permit. He came in, he was stolen in. And then God moved him from whatever was his position in, in the pit to a place of exaltation that also benefited his family. After all the plots to silence him, after all the plots to keep him on the cheek, after all the plots to let him not survive in life, after all the plots to destroy his destiny, after all the plots to kill him, to strip him of his royal garment, his, his special garment that his daddy made for him, throwing him into the system, getting him out of the system and selling him and telling stories about him. All these things about Joseph ended in a breakthrough, a divine supernatural breakthrough that not his father, his mother, his effort, it wasn't his personal struggle that took him to that position. And why am I citing Joseph as an example for us to to look up to and pray for divine breakthrough tonight. I am citing Joseph because God loves you. And at times the love of God for you can create a situation around you. I don't know what situation is being created around you, but I know that there are some who are calling you a dreamer. I know some are even plotting to move you away. Some are plotting to cover you so that you will not shine. In the place of work, they want to strip you of a position of the joy, of the love, of the director of the place or whatever, wherever you have found yourself. There are times they want to throw you into a system nobody wants to see you or they want to make money out of you. They want to get promotion by telling stories about you or they want to cover up everything about you with lies. They are even now telling lies about you and you don't know how to defend yourself. It happens, my dear friends. And it happens more when you are loved by your father. Joseph was loved by his father and his brothers hated him so much. God loves us so much. He gave us Jesus. He loved us with an everlasting love. The Bible says when God made every other thing, he made them according to their own design. But in Genesis 1, 26 and 27, when God wanted to make you, he made you in his own image and after his own likeness. God distinguished humanity. When we are baptized, we are baptized into Christ Jesus. And so we bear the image of the Son of God. We carry around ourselves the image, the image of God. And then when the devil sees it, he's not happy with you because he knows God loves you. In, in the book of Psalms, Psalm 139, verse 14, the Bible says, You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. God so, so distinguished you and has blessed you. Paul put it this way in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, that he has blessed us with every 
every spiritual blessing. God has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing. So we are loaded with blessings. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. We are created in the image and likeness of God. And we are even loved with an eternal love. A love that is not conditional. A love that is personal. And because God loves you, you don't expect the world to love you. You don't expect things to work all towards your good. You expect the devil to hate you. Expect even your brothers to hate you so much. Just because God loves you. I don't know what you're feeling at times when things are not working for you like it did for Joseph at a point in time when things were turning against him, when his brothers hated him, when they sold him out, when he found himself in prison and all that and all that. He might be thinking about himself. Say, so why did God hate me so much? Why am I passing through all this pain, one pain unto another, from the pain in my father's house to the pain of betrayal, to being sold, to being thrown into the system, to being derailed, to being stripped of all everything that made me jo- that gave me joy for all those things Joseph will be asking himself why am I passing through this pain? Why why are things working this way for me? I know there are a little a lot of children of God who are hearing me today who are asking themselves the same question. Maybe things have not worked out in your family. Maybe you lost a dear one. Maybe you lost your job. Maybe your health is not the best. Maybe your immigration status is not even something to write home about. It's not something to encourage you. Maybe you have found yourself in a system now. Maybe you, you turn around and you see your brothers hate you. Your family doesn't talk well about you, even as you're making effort to help him. Remember, it was when Joseph went to provide for his brothers, to go and check them out, to go and take food to them in the fields that they cornered him. So he was even doing a, a service to them. He didn't have to be there, but he went, and his brothers, now manifested their deep hatred for him. There are times when things do not turn out the way you, you have planned it, but even in that broken system in your family, that broken system in your workplace, that broken system, broken relationship in, in your marital aspiration, that broken relationship with your professors in the school where you are trying to acquire a diploma to help yourself, that circumstance that is not working well for you. God works through all that to manifest his love for you. So there can still be breakthrough even through your pains. Your pains can still end in breakthrough. The Bible says tears may tarry through the night, but there is joy in the morning. I don't know, maybe you're passing through tears like Joseph passed through some time in his life, but there is a joy of the morning that is coming. There is a breakthrough that is about to manifest. And I want to just walk you step by step to, to break through according, following the life of Joseph. There, there were seven steps divine breakthrough in the life of Joseph. And my dear friend, my dear brother, my dear sister, as you are listening to me, if only you can key into the system, God can bring you to a higher breakthrough. The Bible says, if you believe in me, you will even do greater things. Jesus said, we shall do greater things. So we can even acquire a breakthrough bigger and larger than that of Joseph, if only we can believe God, if only we can trust his love, if only we can stay tuned and Stay connected. And I show you the seven steps to divine breakthrough. Number one, after all had been said and done, and Joseph was sold into slavery, he found himself in Egypt and started serving his master. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 39 that the wife of his master loved him. But pathway to breakthrough, step to breakthrough, part one, Joseph resisted that temptation. Every time there is a breakthrough coming your way, the enemy plants a temptation. And these temptations at times can come in the form of a quick fix. Come and have it. Come and have this pleasure. They come in form of a pleasure. And if you key into that pleasure, you lose your blessings. You lose your breakthrough. You lose a major, a major avenue of divine positioning that has been prepared for you. It happened to Esau. Esau went for a quick fix. He went for pleasure, for a, a, a pot of porridge. He, he was looking very delicious, and he went for it, and as soon as he went for it, he lost his birthright. Judas went the same route. He was looking for money, and he lost the key, the position that God gave him in the band of apostles, that he was replaced in his, after his death. He was replaced among the apostles. Samson and Solomon went for the same quick fix. They went for pleasure. And because of pleasure, Solomon, who was the wife, uh, died in a wretched manner. He died losing the, 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 the love of God for him. 
something lost his power because he was going for a quick fix. My dear friends, whenever there is a blessing coming your way, the enemy will bring about temptations. But when that temptation comes, your response to the temptation and your resistance to the temptation assures your place in the divine program for breakthrough. When that temptation was hitting, the Bible says in verse 8 and 9 of Genesis chapter 39, that Joseph said to the woman, I cannot do this thing that is not pleasing to God. My master has given me everything, the key to every place in this house. He has allowed me to enjoy every blessing in this house. The only thing that is kept away from me is you because you are his wife. And even though he may not see me, it is wicked before God and I cannot do it. So I, I am not observing the eyes of my master. I'm only respecting the edict of God and the command of God. He stayed focused. And the Bible says in verse 10 that though the woman spoke to him daily, Joseph would not give him. Joseph will not give in because he, he realizes the word of God in First Samuel chapter 2, verse 30, that God said, those who dishonor me, I will make into a thing of derision. He did not want to dishonor God. He did not want to disobey God. He did not want to do something that was not pleasing in the sight of God. And so he remained steadfast in the time of temptation. He resisted temptation. My dear friends, there are a lot of us who are missing out in our breakthrough because we give in to the temptation that the devil sets to distract us from the major thing. Once there is a temptation, a temptation is only trying to pull you away from the greater blessing that God has prepared for you. I don't know what is that temptation. I don't know what is that quick fix that is hanging around you. I don't know what is that pleasure. You may think it's pleasurable, it's alleviating your pain, it's ending your suffering. You are a slave, but you are enjoying the, the wife of your master, but my dear, you will end the slave. If you need divine breakthrough, you must get away from that temptation. You must look up to God. You must avoid that quick fix, that pleasure. You must avoid that pot of porridge and look up to God for a divine breakthrough. It may take some time, but it must definitely come. The prophet Habakkuk says, these things I am saying to you, write them down. Though they may tarry, wait for them, because they must surely come to pass. They will not delay. Even if they delay, wait for them. It must surely come to pass. And that is God for you. When you resist and stand your ground, it might take some time, but that breakthrough will come, and it will be mega. It will be, it will, it will be more than you can think of, ask, or imagine. The second key to divine breakthrough, Joseph served the Lord in adversity. While Joseph was in this kind of condition, he did not lose connecting with God. He said, I cannot do this that is displeasing to God. And the woman accused him, and Joseph moved from being a loved slave into a prisoner. But even in the prison, Joseph was still serving the Lord in the prison. Joseph was still faithful to the Lord that God gave him favor before the, 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 the custodian of the prison. Before the person who was taking care of them in the prison, the prison warder, Joseph was favored. And Joseph was made the leader among all the prisoners. And even while he was in that prison, he was still serving the Lord. He was there faithful, praising God, and people knew him to be a person, a personality who, has a, who had a different, who had a, a link with God, and they could connect him when they, when, when they are in trouble. Joseph was in prison and enjoyed the favor of God in prison because he was staying close to God. He did not complain. He did not say, oh, I, I was trying to bless my brothers, and I found myself a slave, and I was trying to, help, to be true to God in the house of my master, and now I'm a prisoner. I am down with God. No way. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the book of Daniel, Joseph was praising God in the midst of adversity. Serving the Lord in adversity is a key to breakthrough because it will only provoke the kingdom of God to come and stand on your behalf. When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were singing to God in, in the heart of the fire, the Bible says a fourth man joined them, and their fire was turned into an air-conditioned situation. That is the way God comes to those who serve him in a time of adversity. That is not the best time to serve God. When there is adversity, people are tempted to leave God, to say negative things about God. Think about Naomi in the book of Ruth, chapter 1. When Naomi saw things turn around, her name meant purity, beautiful. 
But then when adversity struck her, she was saying to the people, do not call me Naomi, call me Mara, call me bitterness. For the Lord has taken away my beauty, the Lord has taken away my pretty, prettiness, and the Lord has fed me with pain and with, 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 with bitterness. So call me bitterness. There are some children of God, when things, when adversity comes, they start saying negative things about themselves and even about their God. They start speaking unto themselves as if they, they are in control of nature. Instead of looking up to that God who has the ability to turn around their situation. And when you look at people like Naomi in chapter 2, when, when Naomi saw blessings coming in, when her daughter-in-law went out and came back with goodies, she started praising God, saying, praise the Lord. Blessed be the Lord who never abandons his people. But when difficulties were coming, when he lost the husband and the children, she was saying, do not call me Naomi, call me Mara. The Lord has brought me bitterness. We don't serve the Lord only when things are well for us. A lot of Christians are fair weather Christians. They praise and worship God when things are okay for them. They praise and worship God when things are working according to their plan. When things are not working that way, they are not faithful. Even when they serve God in, in adversity and things turn out to become good, they abandon God. And they lose the breakthrough. The second key to divine breakthrough in the life of Joseph was his steadfastness in the time of adversity. His steadfastness in the time of adversity in the prison Joseph was ministering. In Genesis chapter 40 verse 7, he was ministering to the prisoner, even in his condition. He saw the man and he was looking dejected and he said, why is it that you are not looking well this day? You are not looking happy this morning. And he started ministering and revealing the meaning of the dreams of the man to him while he was still in prison. A prison that he didn't merit. A prison that he was not supposed to come to. But he was serving the Lord in prison. Is a key to breakthrough. Is a key to breakthrough. The number three key to divine breakthrough. Maintaining your peace. Maintaining your peace in every circumstance. That is the reason whenever Jesus appears to his apostles, he say, Peace be with you. Do not be afraid I am here. He will turn to Jerusalem and say, Do not be afraid, just believe. He will turn to his apostles and say in John chapter 14, verse 1, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God and believe in me too. In my father's house, there are a lot of mansions. Joseph maintained his peace. He was still in communion with God. In Genesis chapter 40, from verse number 23, when Joseph had finished interpreting the dream of the cupbearer of Pharaoh to him, he told him he would be restored and made a request for me. He said, when you go back to Pharaoh, please put a word out there for me. Please remember me before his presence and pull me out of this prison. But the man went out and forgot about Joseph. He forgot about Joseph. The, the, the story that says the cupbearer forgot him. Yet, he kept serving the Lord. He did not complain to anybody. He was not quarreling with anybody. He did not become mean to those who were having problems. Instead, he kept his peace in the prison and was serving the Lord faithfully. He did not live in anger. Maybe there are times when people you help go out there and they forget you or even try to create problems for you after you have helped them. And you go about complaining, you call bro a quick complaining, you call father A complaining, you call father B complaining, you call your mother in law, you call your father in law, you call your brother in law, you call your sister in law, your friends will know that this person has treated me badly. And then you lose your peace. And so when you see other people, you treat them in anger, so that's them, they are coming. When I, when I bless them now, they turn around and they start hating me. And my dear friends, that can cut short your breakthrough. Even in the time of adversity, maintain your peace. Be calm and look up to God. Be calm and look up to God. The Bible says, be still and know that I am God. In every circumstance, you just need to be still. Look up to God because he knows what to do in your condition. He can transform that condition. All you need is to hold your peace. Don't complain away your blessing. Don't dis dislodge yourself by complaining and getting angry and reactionary to people. Just maintain your peace. Be yourself. Still be loving. Still be caring. Still be fellowshipping. Still be worshipping. Still be believing God. Even when things are not working out for you. Even when friends 
are hating you, even when family are not helping you, even when people you have helped are not turning around to remember you, still be steadfast because God has a program for you. So we need peace. It's a key to breakthrough. Because at times people hurry into trouble. You have a situation and out of worry, you want a quick fix, you want to cut corners, and you get into trouble. But when you relax, God gives you a revelation. And that revelation can bring you an elevation. We need revelation. Most of the time, what we need is not worry. What we need is not trouble. Jesus spoke to matter in, in, in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, from verse number 40. He said, matter, you trouble and worry about too many things, but only one is important. And Mary has chosen that part. There are times we don't need to worry. We just need to maintain our peace and allow the Lord to do it for you. Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God and believe in me too. We just need to believe in God. We just need to believe in God. Your peace in the time of adversity shows that you are trusting God. And when you trust God, he will act on your behalf. Psalm 37, verse number 4 and 5, 3, 4 and 5, he says, trust the Lord and he will act on your behalf. When you are calm and trust the Lord, he will act on your behalf. Psalm 46 verse 10 say, be still and know that I am God. When you are still in the presence of God, God will act. You know you are relaxed. You are waiting for him to take over. It's a key to divine breakthrough. The fourth key to the breakthrough of Joseph was his patience and steadfastness in trial. As Joseph was calm, he remained patient. The Bible said in, in Genesis chapter 41 verse number 2 that it took two years after Joseph had helped the bearer to regain his position. After Joseph had interpreted the dream of the bearer, he remained in prison for another two years. Nobody remembered him, but he was still patient. He was still steadfast. He was still waiting on the Lord. He was still interpreting people's dream until Pharaoh had a dream. And the cupbearer was forced to remember that it was Joseph who interpreted his own dream. And then he mentioned the name of Joseph to Pharaoh, and Pharaoh brought out Joseph from prison in order to come and interpret for him. Not because the cupbearer wanted to bless him or to help him, but because there was a need. You know, there are times when friends remember you when they have a need. There are times when people only remember you when there is a need. When your office will call you to come and work, when there is a special need, when they know that they, this needs special skill, they remember you. But when they want to eat, they forget you. And at times you struggle and you fight. You struggle and you fight and you quarrel and you complain. But Joseph was patient. He was patient in prison. Two years later, I don't know how many years it may take, but I know it will not take long. Or, or no matter how long it takes also, I know that the Lord will definitely show up. The Lord will show up in your case. You just need to be patient and steadfast. Joseph was patient and steadfast. Today, many believers are not patient enough. When things are happening around them, everything, the world turns upside down. But one of the hallmarks of Christianity is that we are ready to wait on the Lord. The Bible says in the book of the prophet Isaiah that those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount weeks like eagle. They shall run and never get tired. That is waiting on the Lord. That is being patient, especially in the time of adversity. Joseph was patient. Joseph was waiting. Joseph did not want to break the prison and run away. He was waiting for divine programming and divine timing. Something is about to happen that will turn around the situation and you will be blessed. And that breakthrough you were expecting will come your way. But until that happens, you need to be patient and you need to be steadfast. We need steadfastness, my dear friends. We need the patience that comes from the Lord. It's a key to divine breakthrough. A lot of people have jumped into, into the fire because they wanted to rush things. They wanted to rush out of problem. And in rushing out of the problem, they ran into a bigger problem. When things happen around you, there are things, times you need to watch out for divine timing. 
Watch out for divine programming. Joseph was a man of the spirit. He was waiting on the Lord in the prison. He was interpreting other people's dreams. He was seeing things in the prison, and he waited upon the Lord. He was not acting on hearsay. He was not acting on information from the physical world. He was acting on information from the spiritual realm. And that is why you need patience. When you are patient and you are waiting steadfastly in the Lord, you are waiting for divine timing. And when that time comes, nobody, no power can stop you. Nobody can limit you because God said, I will go before you. I will break the bars of iron. I will shatter the gates of bronze. And I will lead you into treasures that are hidden in secret places. That is how it happens. When God wants to lead Israel out of slavery, he will go before them. He will break the Red Sea. He will turn their enemies around. He will fight their enemies for them because God is always there for those who wait for that divine timing. And someone like Moses will t say unto Israel, relax, the Lord will fight your battle. You just need to hold your peace. Hold your peace. The Lord will fight your battle. Be patient. God is about to do something. While they were struggling, trying to stone, Joseph, stone Moses, Moses was saying, saying to the Israelites in Genesis 14 from verse number 12 to 14, be calm. The Egyptians you see today, you shall see no more. You just need to hold your peace. The Lord will do this fighting. It happened in the book of Chronicles, Second Chronicles chapter 20, from verse number 15. God brought a revelation to the king, Jehoshaphat. He said, this battle is not yours. This battle belongs to me. You just need to be calm. And what, what the Lord is about to do in this kind of situation. Just praise God and watch what he's about to do in this kind of situation. My dear friends, there are times when we need this patient. It's a key to breakthrough. Patience and steadfastness. The fifth key to the breakthrough of Joseph was his, his, his large heart, his ability to forgive his brothers. After all had been said and done, and Joseph was brought to breakthrough after he had revealed to, to Pharaoh the famine that was about to hit the land, Pharaoh brought him out, out of prison. Pharaoh made him the second in command. Pharaoh put back on him all that his brothers had removed from him. He, he received another royal garment. He received the golden ring. He received the crown to be a prince in a foreign land, to be a second in command in a foreign land. And he was moving about with chariots. You see, the Lord, whenever the enemy removes things from you because your father loves you, the, 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 the God you worship, if you are steadfast, if you are, if you are standing in righteousness and resisting temptation, if you are standing with the Lord in a time of adversity, if you maintain your peace, if you are patient and steadfast, the Lord will restore you. And when God restored Joseph, his brothers came back looking for food. Out of a vision that God gave Joseph, food was in abundance in the land of Egypt. And his brothers left Israel looking for food. And they came to this man who was supposed to be their enemy. And what did he do? He forgave his brothers. Even while he was in prison, he didn't even complain that he was my brother that sold me away. He knew what happened, but he never told that story. When he wanted to accost his brothers, he sent the Egyptians away and took them into a room and revealed himself to them. He did not revenge because he knows the, the word of God said that vengeance is mine. Leave vengeance for me. He did not revenge his brothers. He did not avenge. He did not shout at them. He only revealed himself to them and made them speechless. The Bible says the day Joseph revealed himself to his brothers in, in chapter 45 of Genesis, he, they were speechless. They could not believe it. They could not believe that this man knew us, he recognized us, and he did not kill us, and he did not throw all of us into prison. He rather navigated his way until this time when he revealed himself to us. Joseph had the heart of the Father. He had the heart of Jesus. In, G, in Luke chapter 23, verse 34, Jesus said to his father. Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. Joseph did exactly the same to his brothers. My dear friends, forgiveness and divine mercy is a key to breakthrough. There are a lot of us that God would have granted breakthrough, but they have animosity against their husbands. They have animosity against their wives. They have animosity against their in-laws, brother or sister. I don't know whom you are having animosity to, but the Bible says if you are going to offer your gift at the altar in, in Matthew chapter 5, and remember that someone has something against you, leave your gift at the altar. Go and be reconciled with your brother. 
Go and be reconciled with your brother. We are ministers of reconciliation. God has given us that grace to forgive so that we will be forgiven. I don't know whom you are holding grudges against, but that can also hold hand down the hand of God for your breakthrough. Maybe when you are blessed now, the first thing you're going to do is going to fight that person you are calling your enemy, that person that doesn't want you to succeed. When you pass that exam, you are coming back, and the first thing you are going to stage is a fight. And once you have that disposition, your breakthrough will not come. Your breakthrough is not coming. But my dear friend, if you have a heart like Joseph, to say, Father, forgive them, they do not know what they are doing, to say, no, I have forgiven you, come and have food to eat. I have forgiven you. If you have that head, your breakthrough is on the way. I mean, I am seeing it is near. I see someone today who will lift up his head to forgive someone, to let go what has been a, a hurting her, to let go someone that you are, you are holding in prison in your heart. As soon as you are letting that person go, God is granting you the breakthrough you are desiring. Maybe you are the person holding your breakthrough because you are still finding it difficult to forgive someone. But the Lord is speaking to you today. God is saying, forgive and be forgiven. Forgiving. The Lord is saying, be like Joseph. Forgive your brother, forgive your sister, forgive your husband, forgive your wife, forgive that your child. Bring that person back to the fold. If there is if, if there is opportunity, the Bible says as much as lies in your hand, live in peace with everyone. Be peaceful with everyone. As much as lies in your hand. Who is that person who is waiting for you to revenge? Can you make that person speechless by showing that person love, by showing that person mercy, by forgiving that person, by giving a call even tonight and saying, I know, you know, I am angry with you, but I have forgiven you. That call alone can become a key to your divine breakthrough, especially when it comes from your heart and when you mean it to the deepest of your resources. If you're having something against someone, the Lord is speaking to you today. If you desire this breakthrough that I'm talking about, then you got to forgive. You got to forgive. The sixth key to the breakthrough of Joseph was his generosity. When Joseph forgave his brothers, he spoke to them in Genesis 45, verse 9 through 11. He said, Is my father still alive? Go back and tell him all that the Lord has torn for me. And bring your, your families with him here. Bring everyone here. Because this family is still going to last for another five years. I will feed you. And I will take care of you. These are supposed to be enemies. But Joseph said, go and bring my father. Go and bring my brother. Go and bring your families. Go and bring your wives and your children. I will feed you for the next five years in this foreign land where you have sold me out to. But I will feed you. He was generous. He had an open heart. Generosity begets breakthrough. The Bible says, give and give shall be given unto you. It was because of the heart, the kind of heart that God saw in Joseph that he gave him the key to the storehouse of the land of abundance in a time of famine. Egypt became a land of abundance in a time of famine. The immediate surrounding the whole of Israel and people around Egypt were flocking to Egypt to go and find food in a time of famine. And who had the key? Joseph had the key. Joseph had the key because he had a generous heart. He could feed any man, even his enemies. He could provide for them. Our Father Abraham was a generous man. He saw, he saw strangers and he fed them. And that day he brought them that food. They spoke to his life and said, By this time next year we shall come back to your family and your wife shall have Isaac. Your wife shall have a reason to smile, a reason to be happy. You will have your own son. It's a gift of generosity. Generosity opens the door for things you cannot imagine in the area of breakthrough or in the area of prosperity. I don't know whether you're a stingy person, but the Bible tells me that if a man is mean unto himself, to him shall he be generous. You need to be generous to yourself so that you can be generous to other people. The book of Proverbs says that a man is sparing and he lacks. Another man is generous and gives out and he abounds. I don't know whether you are sparing. You are keeping things unto yourself. You don't share with anybody. You are so selfish that you don't remember the, the power around you. You don't remember your family, your friends. Maybe your parents are suffering. Maybe your sister is suffering and you are living in abundance. Maybe some, a sister in Christ, if someone you know around you is, is, is going in without food every day. There's no food on their table and you are living in abundance. And you don't, take it, you don't care about them. But when you have any need, you need healing, you run to the Lord. You need any blessing, you run to the Lord. Your only money comes out as if you want to bribe God. You are not generous from your heart. You cannot experience this kind of breakthrough I'm talking about tonight. 
divine breakthrough in the land of Amai, in a foreign land, that breakthrough can come and you will have the key to that abundance if you are a generous man or a generous woman. I don't know the level of generosity you are, you are operating with today, but I am speaking by the power of the Almighty that if you have never been generous, this is the time for you to learn generosity. You check out people you can help. These people did not tell Joseph we are in need of food. Joseph could have said, okay, take enough. I will give you two bags. Take two bags. When you are hungry again, come back. He said, no, go and bring your families over here. I will tell you where to settle. I will build houses for you. I will give you everything you need so that you can be away from famine. Because this famine is still going to last for another five years, but I have enough food to feed you. I have enough food to feed you. God is saying I should speak to someone. Maybe you have enough food to help someone out there. You have enough money to help someone out there. Don't close in on yourself. Don't lock up that door. Because if you lock up that door, you lock breakthrough. You, 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 you may think you are comfortable to yourself, but the, the key to a greater breakthrough to where God wants to position you in a foreign land is still not open. It's not in your hand. And you need generosity to open that door, to move to a higher ground. Is a key to divine breakthrough. And finally, the seventh key to the breakthrough of Joseph. Joseph was keeping his divine link. Joseph, all through his time of his life, he kept his divine link. Joseph kept his divine link. He did not cut out. There are times to say, stay tuned. When you are connected to a program on the television, stay connected. You need to be, stay connected. You need to be with the Lord. You need to remain in the Lord. When the brothers of Joseph noticed that Joseph was a man trying to help them, they became dumbfounded. They were afraid. They didn't know what to say. They didn't know how to go from there. But what did Joseph say to them? From verse 5 of Genesis, chapter 45, Joseph said, Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come close to me. When they had done so, he said to them, I am your brother Joseph, the one you sold into Egypt. And now, do not be distressed, and do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here, because it was not you that brought me here. God sent me here ahead of you, so that I may save your lives. For two years from now, there will be famine in the land. And for the next five years, there will be no plowing or reaping. But God sent me ahead of you to preserve you from, to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to save your lives by this great deliverance. So then, it was not you who sent me here, but God. He made me father to Pharaoh, Lord to the entire household, and ruler of all Egypt. That is what God made him. And so Joseph saw the hand of God in everything that happened in his life. It was not you that sealed me. It was God trying to bring me here. So God was in my life. When I was being stripped by you, God was there. When you threw me into the prison, I was keeping my link with God. When you threw me into the system, God was with me. When you sold me out to the Ishmaelites, God was with me. On my way to Egypt, God was with me. When I got to Egypt in the house of Potiphar, God was with me. When I moved from the heart of Potiphar into prison, God was with me. I kept my link with God. When I was in adversity, I was keeping my link with God. When I was starving, I was keeping my link with God. When I was poorly clad as a prisoner, I was keeping my link with God. When they forgot me, even after I had blessed them with their dreams and their interpretation, they, I had my link with God. I was keeping pace with God. I don't know how it is with you. Maybe your link with God is truncated. You are there today and you are not there tomorrow. But God is speaking to you tonight. Keep your link with God. Keep your link with God. Joseph kept his link with God. Keep closely tied to God. Do not turn away from God. God sent me here ahead of you. It's God in my life. It's God seeing me through this pain. No, you disappointed me. But God is trying to work it out for me. And I'm sick today. But God is trying to bring me healing. Things I'm are not working well for me, but I know for because I love God and believe Him, everything will turn around for my good. 
That is what the Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 28. For those who love God, everything turns around for good. And if God be for me, nothing can be against me in verse 31 of Romans chapter 8. So if God is for me, nothing can be against me. So I am seeing God in everything happening in my life. And so I am keeping God with me. I am staying close to God. I am keeping my link with God. Nothing will separate me from the love of God. Nothing will separate me from, from doing my prayers every day. Nothing will separate me from living my Christian life. Nothing will separate me from living as a true believer. Nothing, nothing can stop me from praising God every morning because I know what the Lord is about to do in my life. I know that though He has loved me with an everlasting love that the enemy may turn situations around trying to make me curse God, but I will never curse God. I will never cut my link with God. And so, because I need breakthrough, like Joseph, I need to resist every temptation and every quick peace, every quick fix. Like Joseph, I need to serve the Lord even in adversity. Like Joseph, I need to maintain my peace even when things are not working out for me. Like Joseph, I need patience and steadfastness. Even if it doesn't come today, it will come tomorrow. If it doesn't come tomorrow, next year is another opportunity. And the Lord will keep me until that time comes. I know the Lord is about to do something, so I keep waiting. Like Joseph, I will forgive whoever has hurt me. Whoever is not in my good books now, I will forgive. I will let go. Like Joseph, I will be generous with whatever I have. I will be generous with whatever resources the Lord has blessed me with. Like Joseph, I will keep my link with God. And if you do so, my dear brethren, I am announcing to you that God is about to reposition you. I don't know what the situation is. Maybe you will leave your homeland, your country, and you have come to this land of opportunity, and you are looking up to God to bless you. God even can do more than you can think of, ask or imagine. He can elevate you in this land. It doesn't matter what your situation is. He can elevate you in this land more than he did elevate Joseph, because you are even operating a new, a new covenant. You are operating the covenant of Jesus Christ. Maybe situations are not working out well for you. Or maybe you are in a good position, but that is not the best God has for you. Maybe you are doing well, but higher positions still await you. Maybe you have dreams, and people around you are seeing you as a dreamer. They are seeing you as a visionary. You, you have dreams that will never come to pass. Maybe you are dreaming big, and people are trying to discourage you. Maybe you are loved in the place of work, and people hate you because you are loved. Maybe your husband loves you, and your brothers-in-law don't like you because of that. Maybe everybody hates you because God loves you. Maybe things are not working out well for you because God loves you. Maybe those in charge around you are favoring you because they love you, and people are hating you. Just look up to God. You just need to look up to God and key into these seven steps. Key into these seven keys that Joseph used. And definitely God will reposition you. He will bring you to a place. Maybe you are also suffering in prison. And you think things are well because you are in charge in the prison. There are some people who are in charge in a place of suffering. You are in charge in a menial job. And you are struggling every day. You are being beaten up by pain because you stand all through. By the fire because you hang around the fireplace. By, by ugly situations because you have to do odd jobs, but you are still in charge there and you think, oh, because you are in charge it is well. No way, my dear friend. There was a time Joseph was in charge even in prison, but that is not the place God has ordained for you. God has a place of breakthrough. He has a, is a, he has a plan for a divine and mega breakthrough because you are fearfully and wonderfully mad. Maybe you have helped people in the past and they forgot you, and maybe things are not working out as you have planned, don't give up on God. Keep your link with God. Be patient with God. Hold your peace. Serve God in a time of adversity. Forgive those who have hurt you badly in this process. Forgive them. And don't let the devil deceive you with a quick fix. Your time of remembrance is now. Maybe they have forgotten you, but God is remembering you. Maybe your immediate environment is not remembering the much effort you have put into that into that place where you walk, but God is remembering you. And very soon, I say soon, 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 the book of remembrance will be opened. The book of remembrance will be opened because of you. The Bible says that the king could not sleep because of Mordecai. The king could not sleep because of Mordecai. In the book of Exodus chapter 6, verse 1, until Mordecai is blessed, the king could not sleep. Whoever is holding your peace, 
whoever is holding your blessing, whoever is holding your breakthrough, that person is not going to find rest until you are restored, until you enjoy that breakthrough. But you need to follow the pathways to breakthrough. Don't let anything cut you short on your breakthrough. The unusual is about to happen for your breakthrough. God is about to make a foreigner the next to the king in a foreign land. God is about to break protocols just to promote you, just to bring about a breakthrough in your life. God is about to lift you higher than you can imagine. Just keep your link with God. Just stay tuned. Stay connected with God. Don't let anything distract you. Don't let the enemy deceive you with the temptation. I am praying for this divine breakthrough. I am praying that the Lord will visit you where you are. It doesn't matter what the situation is. God is about to break the protocol in order to promote you, in order to bring about your breakthrough. Just keep your link with God. Stay tuned. Keep connected. Your season of breakthrough is here. Your season of breakthrough is here. The power for divine breakthrough has been made available for us. And God is about to do something tonight. God is about to do something in your life in this season. I am praying for you, wherever you are now. I link you to the link, to the altar of the Most High, to the throne of divine mercy, to the throne of divine breakthrough. It doesn't matter what the enemy is doing against you. It doesn't matter what the love of God for you is the situation that the love of God for you is creating around you. But it matters that God still loves you. And whatever be the situation, whatever be the hatred, whatever be the pain, whatever be the circumstances trying to take away your coat of many colors, trying to take away the joy of your father, trying to take away the love of your family, trying to take away the abundance, the comfort, the blessings around you, that God will restore you and even give you something greater. God will bring you to a place of exaltation. God will bring you to a place where you are in charge. Why you hold the keys, the keys of abundance, the keys of supernatural supply. Because I know what the Bible says. He said, my God shall supply your needs according to his riches in glory. So there is a level of riches that you are being introduced to. You are not operating by the riches of the world. You are, rich. you are operating by the riches of the glory of God. All you need now, if you are listening to me, lift up your hands and surrender every circumstance around you to God. I don't know what the circumstance around you is, but let us surrender to God. Let us surrender to God. Let us pray a prayer of surrender now. Say, Lord, I surrender everything to you. I surrender my life and my destiny to you. I surrender everything that the enemy has stripped me of to you. I surrender my life, my family, my destiny, my marriage, my workplace, the joy of my life, my health. I surrender all of them to you. I surrender, oh Lord, my future. I surrender every matter that concerns me. And I sing this song, oh Lord, in complete and total surrender. I surrender all. I surrender all. All be my blessed Savior. I surrender all. I surrender. Surrender everything, just like Joseph, hands of hand over everything. Joseph surrendered his coat of many colors. He surrendered his position in the family. He even surrendered the love of his father because he knows that God above will reposition him. God above will reclude him with a better garment. God above will give him a better opportunity, a better position, a better place in life where he will still be take the dominance, the dominance of his father's love for him. The dominance of God's love for us is coming back to us. Father, we are submitting everything now, everything, even those ones that trouble us, even those ones we think we want to fight out. We are surrendering, O oh Lord, because you fight our battles for us. The Bible says you will fight those who fight us, you will contend against those who contend against us. And so, Lord, as we are surrendering, we acknowledge the fact, O oh Lord, that many times we have not lived up to expectation. There have been times, O oh Lord, who have not lived like Joseph. There have been times, O oh Lord, who have given in to temptation, various types of temptation. There have been times, O oh Lord, who have accepted the pleasure of the enemy. 
who have accepted all of the quick fix, like in the case of Lord of Esau, like in the case of Lord of Solomon, like in the case of Samson, and we have lost the breakthrough that was supposed to come our way. We are asking, O oh Lord, for your mercy now. We are asking for your mercy. For the many times, O oh Lord, we have abandoned you in our adversity. For the many times we have become prayerless because things are not working out for us. We are sorry, Lord. We are sorry. For the many times we have lost our peace, we have been very angry, we have complained a lot about circumstances around us. We are sorry, Lord. We are asking for forgiveness. For the times, so Lord, we have not been patient. For the times we have not been steadfast. We are sorry, Lord. For the times we have been hopping on two legs, jumping from pillar to post, looking for help where there is no help. We are sorry, Lord. We ask for your mercy. For the times, so Lord, we have not forgiven those who hurt us. For the times of our reservation against our brothers and our sisters, against our family, against those who hurt us, we are sorry, Lord, we are asking for your mercy. For the times, so oh Lord, we have not been generous. For the many times we have been selfish. For the many times we have thought only about ourselves and have not helped people, we are sorry, Lord. For the many times, so oh Lord, we have broken our link with you. For the many times we have not stayed connected with you in prayer. For the many times we have not stayed connected with you, for the many times we have lost our focus, we have been distracted from the blessings coming, from the breakthroughs because we cut the connection, because we lost focusing on you, the God of our restoration. We are sorry, Lord. And in any other way, Lord, we have offended you in our ways, in our thoughts and actions. In any other way, Lord, we have deprived ourselves of breakthrough in the past. We are asking for mercy now. We are asking for mercy. We are asking for mercy. Let the wound of the side of Jesus open again, as in John chapter 19, verse 34. And let the blood and water flow again. Let it flow over us, O Lord, and cleanse us. Let it purify us, Lord. We claim a righteousness that is not of our action, but the righteousness that is of Christ Jesus. Lord, we are counting on your mercy, O Lord. That as your mercy sanctifies us today, as your mercy sanctifies us, O oh Lord, we can step in and possess divine breakthrough. We can step in, O oh Lord, and possess the breakthrough you have ordained for us. Because we know you have a higher plan, a mega plan, O oh Lord, for us that we have not yet come to. And we want that place, O oh Lord. We desire that place. We are praying for that place, Lord. But as we pray for that place, O oh Lord, anything that will stop us from going there, O oh Lord, from our sin. And from our actions, we plead for mercy. And we pray, O oh Lord, that the blood of Jesus will sanctify us. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It washes whiter than snow. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It washes whiter than snow. Father, let this blood that washes whiter than snow. Let this blood that washes copies of heavenly things. Let this blood, O Lord, sanctify us and wash us. That we may be found worthy, O Lord, to stand around your throne to receive the key to divine breakthrough tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Now we are about to pray for breakthrough. The father, the father's love made the brothers of Joseph hate him. If there is anything the love of God for you has created, any circumstance the love of God for you has created around you, maybe there are hatreds, maybe the devil has been plotting against you, maybe the devil has staged a siege against your life, against your family, Maybe you have found yourself as a slave in a foreign land. You need some power for breakthrough. And that is what we are about to pray now. But what will lead us in prayer now? To pray for divine breakthrough. Everything the devil and his agents are plotting against us. The Bible says his brothers hated him so much. Every angle hatred has been surging against us. This is the time to rise in prayer. Lift up your right hands now and let us pray.
Brother, what we over? There is power, there is power, there is power in the blood. There is power, there is power, there is power in the blood. My dear brothers and sisters, the dice have been cast. The message has been delivered. I don't know where you have been taught by this message. In the life of Joseph, the coat of many colors was taken away from him. Till today, the enemies are still after your coat of many colors. There are colors in your life that the devil is after. Maybe it's your intelligence. Maybe it's your wealth. Maybe it's your happy family or happy life. Maybe a person that is highly favored. And all these things are attracting the enemies after your life. Tonight, the Holy Spirit is going to tear down the garment of shame. That every hand that is holding your garment of many colors, that is holding your glory, we are coming upon the heavenly barrack, the heavenly armies, to come down, to come down, and the fight your battle now, and they bring back the restoration of your glory, restoration of your coat of many colors. When Amen. our brother Joseph was, when he lost that his coat of many colors, he was sold into slavery. He lost his family. He at a point he was in the prison. Let me tell you, life was never the same after he lost his coat of many colors. What is that glory? What is that coat of many colors in your life that you have lost, that have been taken away? Ever since it was taken away, you have never been the same again. I am praying now with my brother, whom the Lord has sent to us today, to come and give us this message that a time has come for you to have restoration of your coat of many colors. In the name of Jesus. We are praying that Almighty God will send his angels to get into the spiritual quarters and bring back all that you have lost, all that the canker worms have taken away. All your glory that have been taken away, whatever thing that have been taken away, machine the rebel of Shinkaya. Let there be restoration now. Joel chapter 2, verse 25 says, And I will restore to you the years that the swarming locusts have eaten. What is that in your life that have been taken eaten away? Or have been taken away? Or have been stolen? Ah, may now there be restoration. May there be restoration now. The cry chapter 10, verse 6 says, I will send in Judah. I will save the tribes of Joseph. I will restore them because I have compassion on them. May the Lord have compassion on you. May the Lord show you mercy. In the name of Jesus, anywhere your coat of many colors have been taken away, anywhere they are hiding, anywhere they are buried, bury the stars, begin to resurrect. Begin to resurrect. Let there be divine exhumation, such that whatever thing that belongs to you, that have been buried, oh, is ours. Let there be volcanic eruption there, so that you have your glory restored, so that you have your coat of many colors restored. In the name of Jesus. Oh, is ours, my dear people of God. Oh, the case of Joseph was a case of one who was suffering from household wickedness. Household wickedness. That was the situation that Joseph found himself into. His own siblings who are supposed to show him love, showed him wickedness, household wickedness. So many of us are suffering from the arrows of household wickedness. The Bible tells us in Amos 5 verse 19, that as it is as if a man flee from a lion, only to end up in the hand of the bear, and he escaped the bear, and ran to his house, only for him to be beaten by a serpent. What I understand here, is that it's possible for someone to run away from the lion outside and run away and escape the bee outside. But this man was arrested. He was beaten. He was attacked by the serpent in the house. I don't know the serpent in your house that is after you. You have escaped the lion outside. You have escaped the bee outside, the crocodiles outside, but the serpent is in the house waiting. That was the case of Joseph. And I'm praying for you that the Almighty God will fight your battle. That God will give you wisdom and strength and grace to overcome every conspiracy of the devil. Every 
witch and wizards that have been unleashed against you. May the mercy of God through this prayer bring you out into dominion. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We are standing against every adversity, arrows of adversity, emanating from the immediate family, emanating from relatives. May God deliver us in the name of Jesus. Anyone Amen. whose destiny is under attack because of your dreams, because of the people you have shared your vision with, let me tell you, it is not everybody you should share your vision with. This our brother Joseph shared his vision with his people, and that attracted envy. I am praying that every unfriendly friend in your life, that the enemy is using as an instrument to hit you below the belt. May the Almighty God arise in the name of Jesus. Let Amen. God vindicate you. May God vindicate you in the name of Jesus. Everything Amen. that the household wickedness and the powers of household wickedness have stolen or destroyed in your life, may God Almighty restore in the name of Jesus. May God destroy their networks in the name of Jesus. Every household Amen. witchcraft, let the thunder from above begin to cripple the activities in the name of Jesus. Every Amen. weapon of household wickedness singling you out, singling you out, oh, yeah, let them be destroyed. Let me tell you, there were so many people in that family of Jacob, but Joseph was singled out. Joseph was singled out, and he was singled out for destruction. I am praying for you that any spirit that wants to single you out to destroy you, oh, may the God who serve the mere mighty Jesus, let him deliver you. Let him deliver you. Let him turn the plots of the devil upside down in the name of Jesus. Every evil leg in the family, every evil hand working against my destiny, working against my life, oh, may all of them be paralyzed. In the name of Jesus, let them be paralyzed. In the name of Jesus, let the blood of Jesus touch me now. Touch me now. Deliver me now. In the name of Jesus, deliver me from close enemies. Deliver me, Lord. Oh, Jesus, from every attack against my destiny. From every attack against my visions. In the name of Jesus, every military spirit using relatives to attack me. May those military spirits... Be destroyed now. Let them be arrested now. Let them be arrested now. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. We are calling on him now. Let him deliver his people. Papa, come and change the situations. The ugly situations of your people. Every stubborn strong man trading my goodness. Every stubborn strong man trading my destiny. Trading my career. So, may the Almighty God through this prayer. Put their territories down. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Resident wickedness that is in my territory. Be arrested now. In the name of Jesus. Every spirit that is causing havoc in my life, just like they cause havoc in the life of Joseph, we declare total destruction of their plans and schemes. In the name of Jesus. Home. Jesus, let the fire move now. The fire of Jesus. The Jesus. Hebrews 12, 29 says that our God is a consuming fire. Let the consuming fire begin to penetrate into the family system and they destroy whatever thing that wants to cripple the family, whatever thing that wants to cripple our lives. May the mighty Jesus begin to terrorize them now. I refuse to be a victim like Joseph. In the name of Jesus, every spirit of backwardness, spirit of retrogression, spirit of failure, shame, reproach, poverty, demotion, the untimely death that have been unleashed to the family in order to sell me into slavery, in order to put my family into slavery, we stand against them now, arrows of accident, arrows of miscarriage, let them be destroyed now, in the name of Jesus, whatever thing I want to cripple, they just have in me, let those things be crippled now, in the name of Jesus, oh, Jesus, in the house of Joseph, in that his family, in that house of Jacob, you see eyes monitoring Joseph. Evil eyes monitoring your life. We are asking the Almighty God to blind. Oh, to make us invisible to the telescopic powers of the evil ones. Every binoculars or instruments they are using to monitor us, to monitor our menstrual cycle, in order to attack our 
our grace to reproduce children or to conceive through the prayer. May God arise and fight our battles in the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Every reverse gear is thought to hinder our progress. Just like the enemies installed reverse gear in the life of Jacob or the life of Joseph in order to hinder his progress in life, in order to put him in the state of being a slave. And God intervened. May that same God reverse whatever the enemies have reversed in our lives. Every reverse gear in our lives, we command them to begin to go into the drive mode, that our lives will begin to move forward. From today, we'll move forward. Like Joseph, we'll move forward. In the name of Jesus, all the obstacles in life turn into stepping stones. And so shall it be in our lives. In the name of Jesus. And so we cripple through this prayer every witchcraft vehicle that has been set against us. Let all of them be crippled. In the name of Jesus, we set their vehicles, their instruments on fire. In the name of Jesus, every demonic driver in our lives, bringing unprofitable journey. We may that be destroyed now. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Yes, my Lord. We cover our destinies with the blood of Jesus. Let there be restoration now. Manipulation spirit be destroyed now. The enemies who wanted to manipulate the life of our brother Joseph, may God arose for him. May God arise for you. You whose destiny is under manipulation, may God deliver you now. May God deliver you now. In the name of Jesus. Sleepy blessings, let them be destroyed now. Rising and falling spirits, may them be destroyed now. Spirit that is causing slow progress in life or insanity. Oh, let them be broken now. In the name of Jesus. Ha! Jesus. Every wicked power assigned to bring me down. Oh, we stand against you. We decree enough is enough. You shall not bring me down. You shall not bring my life down. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. Every wicked power. Oh, using household wickedness to bring me down. May God, through this prayer, bring their conspiracy down. Bring their messengers down. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Every evil altar that is set up against my system, against my life, against my family. Evil altars raised to bring me down. May God set those altars on fire. May the fire of Jesus destroy us from the kingdoms. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, mighty God. From today, Holy Father, I am free. I am free. I am free. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. From today, Holy Father, I will resist every temptation that is coming at the edge of my breakthrough. In the name of Jesus. From today, oh, I will have my peace in the times of trouble. In the name of Jesus. It's all like he just said. I will have my patience and my steadfastness in life. In the name of Jesus. From today, I stand against every spirit that doesn't want me to forgive. Oh, through this prayer, I receive the grace of forgiveness. In the name of Jesus, like he just said, I will forgive all that have offended me. Ah, all people that have betrayed me, betrayed the trust I have in them. May God Almighty give me the grace to forgive them. I forgive them today. In the name of Jesus, I pray, O oh Lord, that from today, may the grace of generosity be upon me, so that I will be generous even to my enemies. The Bible says, Genesis chapter 20, the evil that you meant for me, God turned it for good. So they, for the blessing of so many, that so many shall be saved. Holy Father, may my story, oh, this ugly situation, ugly season I passed through in my life, may it end up in testimony that will save many. In the name of Jesus, from today, I will keep a divine link with God, and nothing shall break it. May the mercy of God surround us and remain with us, now and forevermore. We pray with thanksgiving. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I hand Amen. over Amen. to our wonderful priest, Reverend Father Albert. God bless you as you take off. In the name of Jesus, Amen. I speak blessings to your life. At the end of that story, Joseph was repositioned. At the end of this prayer, as you go back to work, may the Lord reposition you. Everything that the enemy has taken away from you, 
let there be more than a double fold restoration. Let there be a new golden ring upon your hands. Let there be a new coat of many colors, royal garments. Let there be decoration. May the Lord decorate you with blessings. May your spiritual life be decorated with blessings, with spiritual gifts from the heavenly places. May your physical life be decorated with blessings. Let there be a decoration of your life with good health. Let there be a new garment, a new garment, a garment of joy. For every time you have known sorrow, may the Lord bring joy, song of joy and testimonies unto your life. For the times you have known weeping, let there be rejoicing and celebration in your family. Let there be blessings and abundance in your family. For the times you have dwelt in famine, let there be feast. Let there be prosperity. Let there be abundance in your house. For many times you are strict and your freedom was restricted in any kind of prison. Because the Lord has brought you deliverance, let there be divine power, enablement to move. Joseph moves from prison to palace. From someone who's whose movements were restricted, he became someone who was now moving with convoy and with chariots. Let the Lord transform your situation. Let your movement now be unrestricted. From someone who was living in a land, in the media resource of the prison, he was given the key to the storehouse, the greatest storehouse of the time. I am praying for a key to you. The Bible says in Revelation 3, 7, and 8, I am the one who holds the key of David, Whatever door I open, no man can close. And whatever door I close, no man can open. By your belonging to Jesus Christ, receive a key. The key to divine breakthrough. The key to abundance. Every good thing you are desiring in this land, in this nation. The Bible says, if you are willing and obedient, you shall enjoy the good things of the land. In Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19 and 2 verse 19 and 20. May you enjoy the good things of the land. May you enjoy the blessings of this land. Every situation in your land that has been moving negative, let the door turn around. Let the, let, the, let the key open the door for a turn around in your life, a turn around in your finances. May your finances begin to team in plenty, that you will have enough to be generous, that you can feed families and feed other people apart from yourself, that you can take care of people around you and still remain rich, and mega in your own blessing. Because the Lord says, I will bless you and you will be a blessing unto others. May the blessing of Abraham be your portion. May the blessing of Israel be your portion. May the blessing of divine abundance be your portion. May the blessing of being more honorable than your brothers, like in the, te in the, in the case of Jabez, be your portion. May that God who began by making you prominent, who began by loving you, show your love now. May your, the love of God for you be manifest in your blessings. May it be manifest in divine protection coming over you and your family. May it be manifest in everything you do. In that place where you have known lack, where you have known famine, as you are stepping back there, let there be prosperity. Let the land begin to yield again. Let your business begin to yield again. Let the love of the place where you walk be restored to you again. Let May you become the favorite in the workplace. Let promotion visit you again. Let fruitfulness visit you again. May your marriage be blessed with sons and daughters. May there be food on your table. May your wife remain a fruitful vine in the heart of your house. May you be happy and prosperous. May your children be like shoots of the olive around your table. May the Lord bless you from Zion. May you live to see your children's children. May you live the peace and prosperity of Jerusalem. May there be peace and prosperity upon your life. May there be divine protection. When others say there is a casting down, let there be from your lips that there is a lifting up. For the Lord is lifting you in adversity. He is making you abound. Even in a time of famine, the Lord is providing for you. I pray now for the grace of breakthrough, anointing for divine breakthrough in everything you do. The Bible says, because you meditate on His Lord day and night, everything you plan to do shall prosper. And I bless you with that blessing of someone, that everything you plan to do from this day, by the special grace of God, shall know divine prosperity in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And let us play with Mary, our blessed mother, whose intercession cost prosperity in a marriage that was running dry in John chapter 2. Let us pray with our blessed mother Mary as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for all sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And may the blessings of God and the intercession of our blessed mother follow us always and bring us the breakthroughs we desire in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.